Um, hello, everybody. My name is Katrina Lacerda. I'm the Asian Pacific Resource Center Librarian for LA County Library, and I just want to thank you for spending your evening with us tonight. Before we do begin with the um, event tonight with Eric, I just wanted to um, wish everyone a very happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Uh, we celebrate every month in May. And if you're interested in keeping up with all of the celebrations that we still have ongoing for this month, please visit our Heritage Month page. Um, there's book lists on there, cultural resources, activities, um, all kinds of good stuff. So please go ahead and visit um, that link that Kasha has kindly popped in the chat. And yes, we're going to have, a, this is one of our great Asian Pacific American Heritage Month events. So again, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, let's get started. So tonight, um, we are going to have an event called In Conversation with Eric Nakamura of Giant Robot. Before we talk to Eric, let's learn a little bit more about him. Established in 1994, Giant Robot was a bi-monthly magazine founded by Eric Nakamura and Martin Wong, which covered Asian popular culture and featured Asian American artists. Influenced by punk and DIY culture, Giant Robot was at the forefront of what was cool, defying stereotypes of Asians and Asian Americans. Let me, let me show you some of the great covers of the magazine, if you're not familiar. Um, while the magazine published its last issue in 2011, Giant Robot Spirit continues on with the Giant Robot stores and gallery located, located on Sautel in West LA. Last year, KCET's Artbound released Giant Robot, Asian Pop Culture and Beyond, a documentary exploring the roots, impact, and legacy of the magazine. Tonight, we are joined by magazine co-founder Eric Nakamura, who also owns and operates the Giant Robot stores and GR2 gallery. Thank you so much for joining us today, Eric. Hi there. Hi, that was very dramatic. I love that. It's your entrance. <laughs> Thanks for making You told me how to do it. So <laughs> no, that was great. I loved it. Okay. <laughs> Literally, you emerged from the shadows. It was very, very uh cinematic. Okay. <laughs> but thank you so much for making time for us today, Eric. We're so excited to have you here with us. Thanks. So before we jump into um the magazine and giant robots legacy and all of that good stuff, let's um can we learn a little bit more about you. Can you tell us a little bit about your background, um, where you're from? I'm from West LA, I guess, and um, my background. That's always now, a question. Are you one of those rare LA natives? I am an LA native. <laughs> I'm born and raised in LA, and I'm still here. And I've only left for just a little bit, and but for uh -huh. the most part, I've been here. OK, great. And yeah. you're Japanese American. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your family and upbringing? Um, sure. Uh, my, my Father was interned at Poston um, uh, in Arizona during World War II. Uh, they came, but I guess his father came to America like in 1906 or something like that. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. And then uh, I think my mother came to America in 1950 something. something. I don't know. <laughs> uh -huh. 53 or something like that. Uh -huh. And um, and they met in West LA, mm -hmm. actually, where uh, my shop's at in that area. Oh, no way. Yeah, they actually met in that area, and um, uh, my father worked at a gas station. My mother just, I don't know, maybe she was just living in the area after high school, mm -hmm. and uh, they met, actually, in that area somewhere, probably in, I'm going to guess, in 1960, around uh -huh. there, maybe, uh -huh. thereabouts, I'm guessing, something like that, and uh, um, that's exactly the area where my shop and gallery's at. Oh, and if you don't know if you haven't been down to Sautel, it's a Japanese American enclave. Um, yeah, uh, it's called Sautel Japantown as of 2015. So it actually has a, a actual uh, Japantown designation. So it's the technically the fourth Japantown uh, in California right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did you know one time there was something like 20 or something like that at one time? Or uh -huh. there was, it's a really high number. And it's kind of surprising when you hear how many there was once. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, now there's four official ones. So what happened? Is it just like over time? I guess so. They, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't oh, know if they were right. all official or what, but uh, uh -huh. it's something like that. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm glad Satel is one. And yes, you guys should visit and go to the giant robot shop as well. Like <laughs> we're there. Um, but yes, a, the magazine is so pop culture oriented. Can you tell us like what was... For you growing up, what was sort of like catching your interest in terms of oh. pop culture or? Yeah. So I, I went to a Japanese school, right? A Japanese oh, language uh -huh. school. Uh -huh. 
uh, alongside of going to, I guess you would say my American, American school. And at that Japanese school, I think that's kind of where maybe you share with other students uh, similarities in what popular culture influences you have from yeah. Japan, let's say, right? Uh -huh. So since um, I guess everybody there's parents were actually Japanese at that time, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'd be comparing like what, what we saw or things we liked. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was definitely the alternative to uh, whatever was on American television. So I think in that way, you know, you compare things like some some kind of an anime or live action or Godzilla or maybe it's food you eat and things like that. I think you just start comparing and you realize, oh, there is an audience or a generation of small generation anyway of people who are interested in similar things uh, that are pop culture related. And I think that's kind of where it started. It starts at home, right, with um. Uh, you know, a father that's born in America and a mother that's born in Japan. So you, it's kind of a hybrid that starts at home and then it gets out little by little. And then you realize, oh, I'm not the only one. There's other people that are um, similar. And into the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of similar things. You know, you're interested in uh, maybe it's Ultraman, maybe it's Godzilla, maybe it's Go Ranger. And, you know, just, there's tons of it, uh, different, different kinds of things, including, you know, there's animated stuff too so it's like early anime you know what I mean mm -hmm. and uh, I think when you add all that together is kind of maybe the things that I grew up with includes and that includes some kind of Japanese food Hawaii related oh. food it's just a mixture of all different kinds of Asian American things and when you were growing up um, I'm assuming because this is very if we're going by you know if we're going by shared experiences there weren't like a ton of Asian American figures um, that I saw in like movies or media. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, things have changed so wonderful and that's wonderful, but um, was it similar for you? Were oh, there I think it's the same American thing, right? Um, uh -huh. Definitely grew up with very few Asian Americans on TV, right? Mm -hmm. Just very little. Yeah. And I think that was kind of how it was. Just, you just see very little. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can count them on one hand. Like, you know, if I was a little kid, especially, it's bad guys in MASH, maybe, or, oh. not, or not bad guys. Maybe it's just the ones that don't speak English on MASH or something. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. it's all just side characters that are right. just really small roles, and they're playing a very Asian person. Mm -hmm. Except maybe very, like yeah. Star Trek. Maybe Star Trek, oh. right? You have, a, you have pretty much a colorless person in Sulu, uh -huh. right? He's sort of one of the crew he could be any color and that's kind of one of the few where you just see oh like there's the, there's just an asian american guy who is playing a you know what what was a he regular. a navigator or something like that like yeah he wasn't really um you know necessarily he could have been any color so the, 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 those are very rare where yes it his asianness wasn't like his main characteristic right yeah yeah it was it was almost well didn't they were in space so it right. didn't matter <laughs> Right. It's like they're lucky they're even humanoid. I mean, they could have right. been like blobs or something because, uh -huh. uh, yeah, but they were in space. So in that way, yeah, definitely um, didn't matter. Uh -huh. So that lack of kind of um, representation, did that factor into how you formed your identity growing up and your self-perception as an Asian American? Uh, maybe just bits and pieces here and there, uh -huh. you know, like friends, family little bit on TV, just a little bit of things that you, I was interested in. I would say you just add it all up. I mean, that's with everybody else. It's probably exactly the same thing. I don't know. If I can just latch onto one thing that's more than um, something else. I have a feeling it's all basically little bits and pieces from all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, including American television, American friends at school, mm -hmm. just complete mix of everything. But I think that's kind of what, uh, America is partially right. It's a mixture of so many different influences that make, you know, each person different and maybe somewhat unique. Uh, I think that's kind of what it is. Especially here being in Los Angeles, where it's just so many cultural influences. Even Yeah, I would say maybe even more so. At least we have more influence from the Pacific area, uh -huh. right? I mean, there's more than more here than let's say on the East Coast, but uh, yeah, I, I guess in that way, sure. But then you know, on the East Coast, there's probably more. Maybe there's more European influence, right? So I'm not sure. Well, I so you had an, an event with the Natural History Museum earlier this month, 
and I attended. And um, James Jean brought up the idea of East Coast and West Coast Asians. <laughs> and I don't know why it blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, that explains so much. Because I oh, feel we're like- very different. Yes. Uh, there's a there's <laughs> definitely a divide, right? Uh -huh. There's some kind of a divide. I'm sure the ones in the central areas like are saying, oh yeah, well, we're different even more, True, right? right? But I, I, I know that there's definitely a divide because um, uh -huh. growing up on this West Coast, you don't hear of other too many Asian Americans on the East Coast and they're there. They have yeah. their own culture, their own world. And there's, it's just, even with the internet, it seems like there's a divide between East Coast and West Coast, mm -hmm. you know, and how I people grow up a little bit differently from each other uh, on the coasts and influences uh -huh. are a little bit different. And um, yeah, no, no, I think that's, that's, I mean, I've noticed that for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, as an East Coast Asian, <laughs> I feel like giant robot couldn't have come up anywhere else but the west coast specifically i think los angeles um and which is i guess a good starting off point to go and delve into yeah the origins of giant robots so when did you decide to start giant robots um that was one of those things where i i know that from just upbringing like i i know i like making um now i've made some zines but then i mm -hmm. i worked at a magazine for a bit and I realized, oh, magazines could be made with a really small staff. That was mm -hmm. kind of important to understand. So I, I actually understood that. Um, I worked at a newspaper uh, in 1991. 90, I actually was a photographer at a newspaper. Again, a very small staff neighborhood newspaper mm -hmm. uh, that was um, pre-digital. So everything was, although typed on a computer, it was actually printed on a printing press. And there was a kind of a wet a paste up process in between, mm -hmm. you know, where actually you're pasting stuff onto a main, you know, like a main uh -huh. board, I guess you would say. And then that gets used as a film negative. And then, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's this old school way where you're actually using an exacto blade and cutting out text and mm -hmm. putting something else uh -huh. in. And that's how you edit things. So uh, I worked at a place like that where I was like right there seeing all of it. And um, I, I did that 2091. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, and I think just being in like LA indie rock, punk rock world, there's people making zines. It's the exact same thing, except uh, lower budget. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just, you know, you put all those things together and then I realized, oh, there's also um, magazines out there that were made kind of with the idea of Asian Americans in mind, right? There are Asian American magazines. Mm -hmm. And those magazines kind of didn't fit my life at all or my interests whatsoever. I thought they were completely different. And I thought, oh, wow, like there's a magazine out or two couple, couple of magazines. And I was just like thinking, wow, these are very um, career centric, success driven, mm -hmm. pretty people driven publications. And I realized, oh, this is not exactly what I'm trying to do or what my interests are. It's not just, you know, get a job and kill it type of thing. It's um, enjoy these other things that I like, popular culture things, popular culture topics and music and movies and more. And I thought that that was really um, missing. And those publications didn't have, didn't have anything like that in them. So uh, it was time to start my own. Mm -hmm. you're, you're being very diplomatic, Eric, because in the uh, documentary, which I encourage everyone to watch, don't watch it right now. <laughs> Kasha, we'll put the link in the chat, watch it afterwards. It's a wonderful documentary that again, KCET put out um, on Giant Robot. You um, were really kind of like going in on those other magazines that were out at the time. And I was not familiar with them, but um, we have them in our archives here at the APRC. And I went down and read like Yoke and A. And um, I totally understand what you're saying. It's very slick, um, but it, the magazines also, I don't think have a point of view. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Like it's covering Asian American topics, but it didn't have a voice, which I think very much giant robot had a voice. I think those voices maybe were, uh, uh, if, I mean, you said there's no voice. It's because probably they didn't, didn't know what they, I mean, they were just making a magazine based on success or making money or looking pretty or it was all based on that. And maybe it was celebrating, I mean, at the time, hey, that's the best they had was um, maybe some of the stars that they were featuring, they weren't stars, stars yet. Yeah. They were they sort were... of like, okay, you made it into this movie and you're sort of like in the background and, but you're, 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 you know, you're the hero, right? And I was kind of like, well, are they the hero or are they just mm -hmm. in the background of the movie? So mm -hmm. I kind of didn't see eye to eye with what 
they were doing, but mm -hmm. that's all they had, I guess. That's all they saw. And I thought I saw things differently everywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then also I like things from Asia and that was, those magazines are specifically Asian American. Mm -hmm. I think I also like things from Asia where things are different. That's where Asian faces are on the cover of a VHS box or a movie poster, right? Those are, it's only going to be Asian faces on them. So I, I just thought, okay, well, I, there's role models out there for sure. Mm -hmm. There's leading men and women or just people in general or monsters for that matter mm -hmm. out there. And um, here there was much less in the nineties, just a little bit. But I also think the origins of the magazine, like really informed how the magazine moving forward. Like again, very much it was DIY. You started off as a staple zine, right? Um, yeah. Did you, do you feel like that spirit did carry on throughout the entirety of Giant Robots Run? No. <laughs> <laughs> so it started off staple and fold, right? A photocopy. Right. Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. the original pages were pasted up with glue, glue sticks and glue. And um, those were like laid out, laid down on a photocopier. And that's how we made the pages. It was like uh -huh. old school style. Uh -huh. uh, eventually, no, it, it succumbs to computers, technology, uh, programs, right? And um, mm -hmm. bigger print shops, I guess, better ones. Mm -hmm. uh, some were in Canada, all, you know, then there's color pages and um, no, it just it becomes very professional and it grows up and turns into a magazine, like the ones in the background yeah. here, I guess you would say. <laughs> and then those, uh, they, they, they go on to newsstands and bookstores and, you know, it, it gets worldwide distribution actually. Uh, and then that was all just unintended consequences. It was just uh -huh. getting better at what you're doing was sort of the idea, right? Just get, making it better and better each issue. It didn't just mm -hmm. become one of these. It it becomes <laughs> better and better over time, little by little. Um, you could just see from the covers, like this Margaret Cho one, it's got a really, I, I did this design and it's not very good. I did this design. It's not very good. But over time, it gets more and more designed and better. All of these other mm -hmm. ones are better. But the early ones, yeah, I did. And they were not very good, you know, until you get a real graphic designer. You just start learning the trade and how to become better at your job, basically. It's just inevitable. I think it's just if you want to keep moving forward, I guess, or or backwards, depending on how you look at it. Some people think we went backwards, you know, oh, as we got more slick, it, uh -huh. it goes backwards. But uh -huh. a lot was a lot, a lot were along for the ride going forward. Mm -hmm. And I think a really wonderful part of the documentary is you see that progression and it kind of like you do touch on the meat and potatoes of how you produced those very early issues to how it progressed to um it being you know in stores like tower and borders uh, which is how i was introduced to giant robot in the mid 2000s um yeah i, so I wish i could come along like, a little later yeah i did like i i wish i could say like my cool friend or something showed me an issue but i i didn't have any friends <laughs> <laughs> oh I was, come on! I was at like Borders or, or either Borders or Barnes and Noble, and there was a time people <laughs> where there were magazines, and it was a beautiful like there was like there were bookstores, yeah, and like you could touch things and read them, and it was tactile. But um, what drew me to Giant Robot was like the design. It looked cool. It looked really fun and just like really artistic. And I was interested. I was intrigued by the covers, and I wanted to read more. What city were you in? I grew up in Orange County. So like oh. it's, it's a La Palma. <laughs> no one's ever heard of that city. Oh, I know where La Palma is. Right by Cerritos. Sure. That's how I go. There's a La Palma there. exit. Yes, we have that. <laughs> but yes, with the, um, with the magazine getting, as you said, like slicker and more like, um, I, I think it, the layout was amazing. And you mentioned it, the documentary touches, it was your graphic uh, design, Wendy, Wendy Lau, right? Yeah. Amazing. Like, I really love the look of the magazine. <laughs> Just to talk about aesthetics. Um, do you think that the aesthetics of the magazine was influential? Because I do, I do think that it was. Like, I didn't, really? I didn't, yeah, I don't think I was reading anything else that really looked like that or had, again, had like the feel of it. Awesome. Because it was like the whole thing, right? It was the whole package. It was just like how it looked, the visuals, the layout, but also like the voice. I, I, I am, I hired Wendy. Yes, good decision. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's a great designer, but I don't think, again, that was an unintended consequence. If you think that her design was specifically um, 
pushing the envelope somewhere or in a direction that's not been done or something like that. That's all on her. She's amazing. But to me, I mean, I look at like art magazines and, oh, there's a lot of magazines out there that I was looking at. So basically when we're going with design and trying to figure out what we want to look like, I had stuff that we looked at and kind of compared to, and I was like, look at this, look at that. And I think that's kind of where it, you know, the look and feel probably comes from is just looking at other stuff that we liked and combining it again, just a hybrid, just coming, making it all come together and uh, becoming your own kind of a thing. I mean, I guess layout on a page, it's really hard to innovate that in a way because there's only, you know, it's English words and pictures, right? There's, there's a finite amount of tools and papers. You can, you can go nuts and really make it uh, unreadable, but <laughs> if you're trying to go for leg, you know, legibility. legibility. And, and clean good, right? design, I guess you would say. Uh-huh. So it wasn't more than that, really. I think those are the key elements of it. And also, aside from like the super cool aesthetics of Giant Robot, um, the stories, the pieces that were in the magazine were so incredibly interesting and exciting and intriguing. Um, is there anything, in, you've interviewed so many amazing people from like celebrities, uh, like, yeah, we see Margaret Cho, we see Jenny Shimizu, <laughs> um, you've interviewed, uh, Maggie Chung, you, like there's so many people, um, but you've also interviewed activists like Yuri Kachimura. There's so many people that you've come across uh, doing your work for Giant Robot. Is there a particular interview that is your favorite? Or... Oh, you said Yuri Kochiyama. Kochiyama, I'm sorry. That's I'm that's looking... an important one. Um, yes, I'm sorry. No, no, no. she's like. I don't know why you did that. Explain it, like, like you know, this is like a thing where um, we're talking about a a, a civil rights activist, a civil rights leader. And uh, usually that's not really a cult of personality type of thing. That's for actors and maybe an artist or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like she probably doesn't want to be famous, but she wants her beliefs and her movement to be famous, right? Right. That She wants that to be famous. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but yeah, I interviewed Yuri Kochiyama and- um, And uh, she was so- She's sort of like the Asian American, the the mother of civil rights for Asian America. Maybe. And I, I don't know I, if that's the right way to put it. I mean, I think that's absolutely true. And your interview with her, she was just came across as so warm. Yeah. And her recollection. I didn't, I didn't know her. It was the first time meeting uh-huh. her, but somebody I knew knew her. So we went together oh, nice. and um, it was in a, a apartment in, in Harlem. I think it was in Harlem. It was, it was like a project. Like it was one of those tall buildings that with mm-hmm. many apartments, many tall buildings. And um, we go up there and her apartment's just one of the hundreds of apartments in this building it's an older building and uh and um there was a jazz guy there he's in the picture oh uh-huh what was his name was it uh i i'm always worried i'm gonna get his name wrong charles charles charlie bird i think that's it that oh, that sounds familiar uh, as a jazz guy yeah <laughs> i have i have his albums but oh nice he was hanging out and then when i showed up she was like telling him you got to leave like you got to go and he was just like I was like no you should stay because you know I'm a fan I have his records I actually have this dude's records and uh he was like no no he goes I'm nobody and then he took off but I took a picture of them together and that's the Uh one we ran the photo we ran was her and Uh him together because I was kind of like wow he's a legend and he's part of like jazz in the 60s 70s and you know 70s more so but 60s 70s and you know what I mean on their own kind of an activist Uh but just one of those random things where I was like, holy smokes, like, what am I doing here? I'm a kid. Like, I don't, you know, I'm way, I'm way overmatched here. So, uh, but it was just fun to do an interview with uh, her. And uh, yeah, at the time, I mean, I knew who she was, but then yeah, her, the cult of her personality now is just even bigger. It's like, yeah. she's uh, legendary, I guess you would uh-huh. say. Fantastic. Um, is, are there any stories that you've written that particularly you're proud of? Or if you were to say, this is this is what I want to be. Oh, <laughs> if you uh, need to read one thing by me, this is. No, no? I don't think there's anything like that. Uh-huh. No, maybe that's next. <laughs> maybe that's upcoming. But uh, no, uh-huh. seriously, I don't I don't I would say no. There's not one uh-huh. thing I could I point to that's like that. You know what I mean? Like I could look at all of these covers and I'm like, okay, I interviewed him, <laughs> this person, this person, like I interviewed, I did all these, right. All of these are, well, not Snoopy. <laughs> we did that. We interviewed the people from the Charles Schultz museum, but uh-huh. I mean, I interviewed like, I think everybody here, this is, yeah, mm-hmm. I did. I interviewed space invader. Yeah. yeah. 
these are all interviews I did for the most part. So, I mean, it's just quantity of, you know, just the idea was there was no peak, I guess yeah. you'd say like, no, like, Hey, did this got here. Right, right. It's more like, <laughs> no, it's like these little steps that keep hopefully going up. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm telling you, some people argue that they just went down every time. Oh, <laughs> like maybe the, the peak was right here, this issue 10. Uh-huh. That's where uh-huh. I interview Yuri, Yuri Kochiyama's in this issue. Uh-huh. Some people say this was the peak right here. And then after really? this peak down, I've heard, I've, I've heard that like okay. this was the peak and then it goes down from there. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Opinions. Okay. <laughs> and that's issue 10 and we go to 68. Yeah, 68. <laughs> So I, that's a long ride down. I would I wouldn't take it to heart, Eric. Stop it. <laughs> that's a that, that is a long. It is that's a long I ride down. From you know, there's 68 steps or 58 steps below this one. So well, frankly, I don't I don't agree with. <laughs> I don't agree with. Yeah, that. Every criticism is valid, right? I mean, all of it. I, oh. I love to. I love hearing it. It's okay. Okay, that's very healthy of you. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's a point to it, and. Uh-huh. Does that make me want to work harder and make it better because I'm mm-hmm. hearing that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Again, right? that's very So in that way, you know, it's great to hear that. I'm I'm uh-huh. down. Let's go. <laughs> so Giant Robot, like of all of the people that you broke a lot, you broke like so many artists and um writers. And, like there were so many people of all walks of life that like they first were known through Giant Robot. There's been so many of those figures, like uh, I first first heard about uh, Nara three, like so many artists and Murakami. There's so many people that Giant Robot was the first to cover them in American press. Yeah, that famous famous cover. I guess um, th- this background was a good idea. I'm- yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a person that you wanted to get and you you didn't? Um. Probably, yeah, there's some, like maybe there were some of the actors in Hong Kong that were hot in 98 or, you know what I mean? Around the 2000s. Right, right. Uh-huh. There's a whole bunch that we couldn't get. Mm-hmm. And then occasionally, this is funny because they were super hot at the time and we couldn't get them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We would always say, we'll get them on their way down. <laughs> and sure enough, sometimes that happened. Like, uh-huh. oh, you're not hot anymore and you're starting to come down the hill here we are ready to pick up the you know pick pick you up if that's possible <laughs> that's happened a few times where yeah we got node we said got node no 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 and then a few years later you know they come calling <laughs> oh, well, it just it just made, it becomes easier let's say and um yeah they're still great i mean uh-huh. that's the whole point is it it's okay if it's later they were they're uh-huh. they're still great well that's very magnanimous <laughs> um also, around this time, when did the stores open? Uh, the store opens. Well, the first okay, one. so the yeah, retail the first... store opens in two thousand one, mm-hmm. right before nine eleven. Oh my gosh! So unfortunately, I... that's like this marker of time, right? Like uh-huh. it opened maybe I'm going to say somewhere in late August, mm-hmm. and nine uh, eleven happens, and I'm kind of like, oh, that's this is like you're thinking the same. You're thinking, oh, should we just close down forever? Like, what do we do? Right? Like, you don't know. And um, it, it was one of those things that I mean, yeah, bad, you know what I mean? Awful right. time. But I just remember uh, people still came out, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, well, bad thing happened, but people still came to the store. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was, but it's just one of those bad markers. I just remember, I can easily say, oh, yeah, right before 9 11. Mm-hmm. And Is that's the first Omen? store. And then um, the galleries, 2003. And then there's um, San Francisco, New York location, mm-hmm. you know, and then there was a Silver Lake location. Uh, that's an, another one here in Southern Cal for those of you not here. And then uh, eventually we opened a small restaurant. I ate there a number of times. I did. I did. I Thank did. You. Um, but so, <laughs> and then, you know, but we opened all these things and um it was kind of uh, with reckless abandon. I mean, it was just, mm-hmm. okay, let's do it. You know, it was uh-huh. kind of like one of those things like, okay, I don't know. I don't know. Looking back, I'm like, okay, let's do it. But uh, was it just, I, you were excited by the opportunities and it's just like, let's keep growing. Let's keep- <laughs> I guess so. You know, it was uh-huh. one of those things where I just felt like um, nothing could stop giant robot. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, we're the small, <laughs> we're the, the zine that turned into a magazine that yeah. then then there's stores and then the stores were loved. So 
uh, then it's like, okay, well, then we have a gallery and people seem to like that. And then it's like, okay, we can open up stores in other places using the same model. And um, we did. I mean, we were close to opening a store in Chicago. Like I actually went out to Chicago to look. That was also like something that I looked to do. So it was just not, you know, it was just, no, it was just keep going. I mean, if like that economic crash of 2009 right. didn't happen uh -huh. or I'm, I'm gonna say 2009 but it was probably even before then that's kind of 2009 10 area mm -hmm. i mean it's possible there would still be stores in other cities you know i wouldn't doubt it and what was your uh, motivation with the stores what was the impetus for for wanting to well, do a brick and mortar retail i think it was well one ma making magazines there's like no money in that <laughs> you know, it's almost like uh, as you get better as a magazine, it seems like things cost more and more and it gets more and more expensive. So mm -hmm. I think having a store and selling merchandise actually was actually a better way to, you know, better way to make money if you wanted to call it that. <laughs> uh -huh. So that was, you know, that was it. But also I think part of it was it's it's the pop culture that we talked about. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's the pop culture we talked about in the magazine. And then it's sort of personified in the store. And it's one of those things where it's like, if we don't do it, other people were starting to sell the items that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, if anyone's going to do that, it should be us. I mean, it should be me, right? It should be giant yeah. robot. It's got to uh -huh. be us. So rather than having other stores do that, it was, okay, we should just do it mm -hmm. and, you know, create our own um, path forward that way. Mm -hmm. And I, that's kind of it. It was simple as that because only reason I knew that this was because when we would make a magazine, um, some folks would be like, oh, um, they're they're going to pay for an advertisement. And then they would ask us what we're writing about so they could put those items in their advertisement. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, so you want to know so you can actually like advertise those items and sell them, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just like, well, we could do that, too. So basically it started happening and it was like mail order before mm -hmm. internet kind of a thing and then it was <laughs> uh -huh. you know internet orders and uh i think we just it just got overwhelmed with product that mm -hmm. it was time to open a store or do something mm -hmm. next level whatever it was and with the gallery was it an extension because you were covering so much art was it yeah, yeah. i think there was a lot of great art including like mm -hmm. stuff like murakami takashi murakami yoshitomo nara and more but then there were local artists who i thought were brilliant Mm -hmm. And they didn't have an outlet and their art was maybe a cross between illustration, design and fine art, right? It was a, this mix. And then that mix was sort of not really cared about, I guess, in general art world. It was sort of like, oh, that's this cartoon stuff happening over there. And I think that's kind of what the, that kind of opened the door. I was kind of like, oh, that cartoon stuff is what I grew up with. It's sort of like manga art or anime art. And it's like that. And I think there's there was no outlet for that. If you did that, you were a hobbyist. So I think having a gallery that kind of featured that and it's uh, pretty much it's whatever, it's it's ancestors or no, I'm not ancestors. The other thing, it's offspring. It's it's whatever going forward from that are things that I was interested in. And sure enough, I guess got lucky because then that kind of, you know, the taking that serious uh, was a good thing because then illustration art kind of becomes fine art over time, uh -huh. sort of, kind of. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that was kind of what makes Giant Robot or the gallery part two unique because of that that direction. It's sort of something that was kind of there because I'm not going to say we're the first ever type of thing, but um, definitely championed it and we championed it in print and then also in a gallery. So it was, you know, multi- yeah, it was great to go in, that you could go into the store and see art at the same time. And I think you make art very accessible. Um, there's a that wide range of, of prices. Yeah, it was. It's That's part really, of it. It was it's incredibly, to be. yeah, democratic. Like I could get this piece of art for you know I'm a student and I can still buy art. Sure and that's can. like that's pretty empowering that idea. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think you, to Jay this Robert. day we're still kind of like that when it comes uh -huh. down to it. Um, I mean, some some people can look at us as the starter place. Like I've heard that said, and I'm like, not exactly a starter place. I mean, but I could see that most galleries have a price point that starts way above where we start yeah, and where we end for that matter, right? I think there's galleries out there that start at a much higher place. That's mm -hmm. that's the norm. 
And um, for us now, I mean, we have a print show right now with prints. There's some prints that are $10 and that's on the wall. So it's pretty democratic. <laughs> I was going to inquire, can you tell us about your current exhibit or? What's oh, it's just, it's called multi-matter. It's just people with many, I guess you would say many items, many, I guess multiples, it's multiple. So it's prints and sculptures and whatever people have multiples of, it was just like, let's oh, just okay. put that in the show. So there's a lot of folks, it's a crazy exhibition and, uh, but a lot of fun. Cool. And people can still pop in to see that? Um, technically tomorrow's the last day, but oh, I'm there 12 to four, but I mean, much, after that, there'll be guys. another one, right? There'll be a different show and it, it continues. This was like yeah. a pop-up. So, okay. So guys, please go visit and see some art. Please, <laughs> please, please support. So, um, you published the last issue in 2011 and, um, yeah. I'm sure it's like, we all know like the publishing world, it's incredibly difficult to publish anything now with the internet and everything being online and, um, was there ever any discussion of moving Giant Robot and having it to be like an online publication? Yeah, I, I for sure um, wanted that. And I think that at that moment, so blogs were popular, right? Mm -hmm. Blogs were still popular. Mm -hmm. uh, the YouTubers were even more popular. That was the next level, right? So there are blogs, but blogs were kind of cool, but kind of going down. YouTubers were popular. So you're talking about like, mostly young people just talking right into a camera uh -huh. and um, talking about topics half the time not researched just giving an opinion and they would get millions of views and I'm thinking wow we're working very hard to get very little and there's just like a 18 year old kid somewhere just blabbing away without knowing anything which is mm -hmm. to their credit and um becoming a personality, a media personality and, and making it very far and getting millions of views. And I was thinking, wow, we're definitely um, on the way out when you see stuff like that. And it's kind of like a bitter pill to swallow in a way, because I'm like, wow, we did the research. We, we tried to like okay. write articles that would end discussion be, or uh -huh. start, discussion, start discussion, but really answer a question. And then mm -hmm. here come YouTubers just asking the same question without any any direction for an answer or anything, just bringing up a question and getting millions of views. And I was thinking, okay, we're, we're near the end when this is happening. So um, blogs, yeah, you can keep doing it. Articles, you can keep doing it, but there was no sustaining. Like the, you couldn't sustain it in terms of uh, our, you know, we're getting older at that point, 40 maybe. And it's like, well, how are you going to earn a living with no income from your writing? anymore mm -hmm. you know like getting online ads was um really difficult mm -hmm. so basically it was really hard to uh earn a living that way you, you basically can't or couldn't mm -hmm. unless you've somehow found a way with advertising online and it was tough at that time mm -hmm. so there was no really great effort to put to just be an online publication i mean could have kept going and we i mean i did it for like a year but it just it was earning nothing <laughs> so it was not, that was kind of like the hard part about it is it was just like, yeah, I wasn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's really tough. I mean, that's like kind of a frontier in a way. Like there are some publications that were doing it, but um, I question at that time in 2010, like how, how were they doing? You know, the smaller uh -huh. ones, probably not doing well. And then maybe over time they got it, but it took time. So with all of the wonderful things that Giant Robot has brought us, so, you know, the representation, the exposure to um, artists and musicians and actors and films and music that we didn't, we might not have heard of before. There's also just like at the base level, Giant Robot was cool. <laughs> like, you know, it was, it was really cool. Like if you wanted to learn about cool things, you read Giant Robot um, and you were always, at like you guys were at the forefront of identifying those cool things. Um, but is there ever a time when you like blew it? <laughs> like, was there like a thing, a trend or like something in pop culture that you're like, oh, I, I, I got that wrong. <laughs> oh, sure. I thought Pokemon was uh, oh. no good. <laughs> um, I, I think, I think it's, I, I didn't think it was good because I didn't like, to this day, I still don't like the design of the characters. Right. <laughs> uh -uh. Like, I understand its value. I understand it's a beast. I understand mm -hmm. it's a you lifestyle. Have a problem with it aesthetically? It's a lifestyle. <laughs> aesthetically, yeah. I was kind of like, 
I mean, yeah, I didn't quite like it. And there was uh-huh. just so many of them and I was like so many characters. And I was thinking, gosh, like I, of all the things I like, most of the time you could just sit and draw it. You know, as a mm-hmm. kid, right? I'm like, oh, you could draw this. Pokemon, I mean, and all those things. I'm like, you can't draw that. I guess, but some <laughs> kids do. But uh, yeah. ultimately, no, look what happened, right? It's uh, uh-huh. he's got that one wrong. <laughs> so I still back- don't like it though, design wise. Oh, you don't? Really? really? It has not no. endeared, it's not endeared itself to you at all? I don't Jigoka? like the design of everything. I, uh-huh. I you know? Something about not, it. Just they're not as, it's just, a, it's just a different, probably a different generation. I mean, I like the uh-huh. Ultraman monsters, right? Uh-huh. That's like uh-huh. the foundation of Japanese monsters, kaiju. It's, it's all Ultraman monsters and uh, Godzilla as well, but Ultraman mm-hmm. monsters. There's so many mm-hmm. that, that to me, those are designed neat, but mm-hmm. Pokemon's but a Pokemon. cartoon. It's it's not quite the same, right? I understand. I understand. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all like cartoon drawn. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. think something about it's Ultraman's uh, live action. Something about it's that a little appeal more interesting. More to, uh-huh. It's just another, it's just a different generation of it. That's all. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like when, I don't want to be a traitor to my generation, but like when people talk about Shrek, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't get oh, it. Oh, Shrek? Like, yeah, it's like a cultural touchstone for so many people. And I'm like, just like I, think, I think it's a great insult when you say someone looks like Shrek, right? That's sort of <laughs> like the mean, the mean insult. So okay. if, you, if you can use it that way, then I guess that's okay. I've seen uh-huh. it used where people go, oh yeah, he looks like Shrek. And I'm like, whoa, that's not nice. <laughs> You're right. It's not right. It can only be taken as a pejorative, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're looking back at the legacy of Giant Robot, what do you think? what do you think it is <laughs> what how would could you surmise like what you think you've contributed to oh i guess if it's different eras of it it depends oh, what era uh-huh. oh okay oh that's cool okay walk us through this walk us through i mean this. is it the magazine era is it the zine era mm-hmm. is it the magazine era is it the shops gallery is it you know what which it depends on which era of it i guess it matters because we're a zine that became a magazine that's already really rare i don't right. think there's a lot of zines that turned into like actual magazines. Mm-hmm. I mean, not many, mm-hmm. you know, like maybe you can count them on one hand type of a thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, in that way, that's already pioneering. It being Asian or Asian American is also kind of bizarre because there's hardly any Asian or Asian American publications, period. Mm-hmm. There wasn't that many. Mm-hmm. So having that be an Asian American publication, that's also kind of rare and weird, right? So I think there's that. And then opening up these stores that become like a template. I think there's a whole bunch of stores around the country that some have come and gone, but they've all kind of used the giant robot template of what works and what doesn't work to like succeed. And, and there's been, there's a lot of shops that probably at this point that have no idea that maybe giant robot is what they've copied, but they copied a co- a person that copied it. You know what I mean? It's gone generations now into, right, um, right. no, there's a whole bunch of stores that kind of, are using the giant robot like kind of template or method or whatever it is to mm-hmm. do business. And uh, that's kind of cool. That's but, uh, cool. Yeah. That, that's yeah. also a legacy that uh-huh. probably we don't get credit. We won't get credit for because people don't remember, like mm-hmm. I got it from this person and that person actually got it from us. Right. Or right. It, it kind of, it's, it skips um, generations in time. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter. Mm-hmm. Those things don't matter to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Was- like, I, I mean, if there's a legacy, it's um, uh-huh. hopefully uh that um hope it was good I, I guess uh-huh. <laughs> something good I, I don't beyond that like maybe hopefully good hopefully interesting mm-hmm. I hope I hope it's any of those things uh but overall no it doesn't it doesn't even matter mm-hmm. but speaking of generations um now I think the landscape is so different even from when I was coming of age where it just it's so heartening to see the amount of diversity in media not just for Asian Americans but for everyone um yeah. where it's kind of like normalized <laughs> well it's I hope better. it is I hope it's it, a yeah, lot it's better than it, it was right yeah so what is your perspective on this change like this wonderful sea change um I well I guess it was I see it as, as waves right it kind of goes up and down so I've seen little bits and pieces of it over time. Of course, it gets bigger and better each time. And then it kind of goes away. And then it comes back better. And it kind of goes away again. And then it comes back better. So right now we're at a top of a a crest. And then maybe eventually it'll go go down a little bit. And maybe it'll come back up. But 
part of it is um, maybe there's a, there's almost too many coming out at the same time, like a lot of Asian American oh. things uh-huh. all at once. And maybe it's a bonanza, like, like there's money to be made so that people are striking it. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I mean, yeah, I, I see it as this temporary thing and it might, it might go away for a bit and then it'll come back again. But hopefully it's just got to be good. You know, you, you, you can, you can make a whole bunch of things, but they just have to be really good and exciting, mm-hmm. whatever they may be. And I think that's a kind of important, but I, I think it's, yeah, one of those things that we'll see. <laughs> it seems like I've seen it in like, you know, like, like right now, black cinema yeah. or black, te- like black television and st- that's stronger than ever, but mm-hmm. that's also gone up and down too. Mm-hmm. I've seen it go up and I've seen it go down and then I've seen it go up again and go and it goes down, but it's all based on making money for a studio and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Is but, there yeah, any- it's, it, but it's interesting. It's, a, it's, uh-huh. it's better now than it was before mm-hmm. and I think it, it'll get even better. Mm-hmm. And maybe there'll be more blind casting maybe yeah that'd be great but then even then like it can't just be blind casting all the time what if mm-hmm. you're blind casting for uh a future mission impossible movie or something like that like similar mm-hmm. accidentally becomes all asian american is that's <laughs> impossible right then it's asian american <laughs> film it, it just can't be oh. blind casting you, mm-hmm. you can cast one or two but you can't just cast everybody. It's just blind. It just happened to be everybody's Asian American. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But can you imagine? <laughs> right? Like uh, imagine it's like some, you know, uh, what is it called? Uh, I forgot what it's called. Like, like, what is it called? Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants or whatever. And <laughs> everyone just happens to be Asian. I don't, it's just not going to happen. It's just a quinky dink. Who do? You know, out of nowhere. It's like, oh, they go to Europe. They're into uh-huh. Greece now. And it's like, they're all Asian American. You have a grandparent that's in Greece? No. You know, it's like, no, it, it, it'll, it'll that's still. That's how it works. <laughs> I'm saying it's, you know, but that, that's kind of what one of the hopes is, is that there's more blind uh-huh. casting that an Asian American uh-huh. can play any role. Yeah, yeah. Just like a, a black person can play any mm-hmm. role. It doesn't matter. Just like, um, like watching a, what was that? What did I watch? Uh, um, was it the, 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 the follow-up to Game of Thrones? Oh yes, uh, uh, dragons. House of the Dragons. There's people who are black in there. Yeah. It's just like I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of blind casting, right? Uh-huh. Sort of, right? I mean, it was like, oh, that kind of became like in a way, it's like that, they could have been white. It wouldn't have mattered, or it could have been Asian. It wouldn't have mattered. It just didn't matter. But it was just kind of interesting to see that, you know, maybe it's kind of taking a a dip into that more and more. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Okay. So um. In, I want to make sure that we respect your time. <laughs> oh, um, I'm good. Been, I, I'm. Oh, I'm that, good. as long as I have coffee, I'm good. <laughs> we'll be here all night. <laughs> so I wanted to, since it is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, I just wanted to lob some um, AAPI uh, uh, questions at you, just to get your 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 take on some things happening in Asian American culture currently. Um, so Asian Pacific American Heritage Month had an official name change to Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Uh, The acronym is A-A-N-H-P-I to be more inclusive. And this was uh, put through by Joe Biden this year. What are your thoughts? I didn't even know. What? Wow, I didn't didn't know. Yeah, we we didn't uh, change our name this year. So we're for LA County Library, it's Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, but we're probably going to change next year to Asian wow. American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. It is very inclusive. It's still probably excluding other people. This is true. Right? But also, what do, how probably. do you feel about that? I Because I have thoughts about, I think the Asian American banner is so huge anyway, and just like unwieldy. Um, and then we, we sh- kind of shoehorn Pacific Islander folks in there too. And it's just like, it's such a huge group of people that don't have a common like language, religion, history, or culture. And it's just like, I, I don't know if it's like the the most um, elegant uh, term to put it lightly. So I, I don't know. What do you so think? Do of- you hope that there's one month for each group or each little segment? Eric, group? one could dream. Let's do it. <laughs> If those observances were that important, yeah. Well, like, but, like January is Korean American Heritage Month, and there is a Korean Her- American Heritage Month. And oh, there is. Okay, um, yeah. So, like February could be like 
Chamorro Peoples of the World Month. What? And then <laughs> let's go. Let's do it. There's 12, though. We have to divide it into 12. <laughs> Only 12. I know. But well, we have to well, like, then we start grouping them. Anyway, no, I think that's, a, that's interesting. I, I mean, it, acronyms will just keep growing, I guess. Uh -huh. I yeah, I don't know if I have a good opinion on that, but I'm, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm glad to include more people or uh -huh. let their, I actually will at least acknowledge more people. Right. So, but do you think that, that there, is there a point? <laughs> is there like this pan Asian American identity? Is that helpful or is it? No, I don't think there <laughs> is. Is there? Uh -huh. Maybe there's, there is maybe up to a minimum level, right? Uh -huh. Like, does the pan-Asian ethnic identity, the pan-Asian, does that include rice? <laughs> Mostly rice or noodles, Should. rice and noodles. <laughs> we got carb. you covered, right? Yeah, pick your carb. <laughs> rice and noodles, rice and noodles. I think we Which got it. Which camp do you so, fall into? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know what I'm saying? It's like the, what, what yeah. are the similarities between uh -huh. all of them? Maybe mm. it's rice and noodles. <laughs> That's about it. Like, seriously, I don't even know what else it could be because there's no uh -huh. common, like you said, no common language. And that's a pan Asian American thing. I mean, mm -hmm. all I can think of is rice and noodles. I can see the benefit would be like, you know, solidarity in numbers, but it's just like yeah. there's so many, no. everyone's needs is so different. I think, but isn't that, it's like that probably all over everywhere else too, right? Yeah. Where there's is there's just so many groups of people even within one region there's probably yeah. there's probably yeah. like more you know what i mean we, like when we sort of like in in la for example we know what thai food is i think uh -huh. but then uh -huh. you find out no thailand has so many different regions and mm -hmm. there's so many different styles of food in one from one place that's not even that big to begin with so mm -hmm. people are going to be that different too everywhere you go yeah all right, so let's let's see more. Asian Sorry, questions. I don't know if that was interesting or not. No, that was that was very interesting. I mean, it's uh, like that is... here in the California. We're like uh -huh. so different from each other. Just between here and San Diego, mm -hmm. like people are pretty different, right? So, yeah. Okay, what is an Asian American historical historical fact or historical figure that you wish more people knew about? An Asian American one. Yes, a historical fact or a, a historical figure. We were wish. the first, we were the first people in the world. I'm just kidding. I don't know if that's even true. I mean, that, that's arguable. I, I don't know if that's true. Debate. <laughs> prove it. I know, just because I'm, I'm laughing because that was one of those things that I think we were, I, we would joke about in the magazine long time uh -huh. ago, because long ago, they would say this thing called Peking man was the first human being, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. That was like what was said a long time ago. Uh -huh. I think that's been like dispelled over and over and over. And debunked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been like, gone. Th that, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> I, no, this is going to so I, I don't know. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, Eric maybe, Nakamura maybe, says Asians were the first people in the world. Oh, maybe the first people in California. That's possible. No, that's oh, not even I true either. So. Yeah, first visitors. So. Okay. First okay, visitors. we'll go with that. We'll go with that. The Ch Chumash Indian, they were here first. The first people mm -hmm. were here first, but the first visitors might have been from China, maybe. Mm -hmm. Rowboats. I don't know. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a good one for you. I don't either. I wish I knew. I'm now going That's with fine. like I'm going with like conspiracy theories at best, <laughs> and they're they're really poor. That's all right. We'll 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 chalk that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I would be remiss running out of time, but um, to ask about libraries, since we are uh, a, a public library, just wanted to inquire: How have libraries impacted your life? Oh, uh, I think for the fact of giant robot, I used um library research back in the day before mm -hmm. internet was widely available i would do research in libraries including uh let's see the ucla library i use that mm -hmm. uh santa monica city santa monica city library i use that uh -huh. one uh -huh. um no i i use libraries still and to this day i still use libraries and i actually still... have an online account oh nice <laughs> so i can actually uh yeah no i can actually check things out and stuff like that so i actually still use libraries and um, guys, just wanted to let you know, if you need research done, you can ask a librarian and we do it for, for free for you. And also, what is it, uh, you said every library branch 
uh, of the LA County libraries have some kind of an Asian American Heritage Month something oh, going yes. on? Typically, every um, if you check our calendar, <laughs> go ahead and uh, if Tasha could put the link again to our Asian Pacific American Heritage Month page. Pretty much every every library observes uh, every Heritage Month, not just Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Yeah. But yes, there should be a program. Um, either it happened earlier this month, or it's still gonna it will be forthcoming in the next in the week next week or so. But yes, including uh, that Lancaster branch that we all celebrate. <laughs> That Lancaster branch too, way out there. We all love Heritage Months. We love to celebrate. It's different cultures. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And um, I don't know if that such... helped at all. Like, no, that I helps. mean, it's that libraries helps. are, you know, it's. Uh, I don't like. It's funny how like, I think as a little kid, we all went to libraries all the mm -hmm. time. It was like a thing to do was go to the library yeah. and. Uh, I don't know. Do they still, is there still tons of kids coming to the library? Because yeah, I, I felt like that was an after school thing that you'd go to the library. It was like, well, yeah, we have story times and we really become more like a community center where we have lots of programming and um, multiple resources for people, uh, health fairs, tax yeah. as assistance, stuff like that. Plus fun events like this, like we're having now, we're having it online. Yeah. yeah so come visit your local library if you haven't. <laughs> and so, Eric. When you go to a library, which section do you make a beeline for? Like fiction? Oh, interesting. Uh, so the West LA Library, which is not a county library, shame on them. No, I'm kidding. Uh, they, they had a zine section. I would actually look at that. That's not something I'm trying to check out. Like, like I'm going to borrow something or try to borrow. Mm -hmm. But just the fact that it existed, I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, ultimately, no, I, I probably wouldn't go to that section regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, what would I be doing at library? I think I would look at, I would, I hate to say it, I'd be looking at periodicals. Hey, no, that's, the, what, what's wrong with that? Do they still, are there still we periodical do. sections we in every library? Do. I thought maybe yes. they'd be gone by now. Oh no, we have them. <laughs> periodicals. That's uh -huh. my, that's my, that's my jam. So that's I'd be looking at that. Excellent. Excellent. So now we're going to round off our uh, our little uh, talk with Eric with our lightning round. Pachoo, pachoo, pachoo. That's oh, this was like... the, oh, I thought this was the lightning round. <laughs> oh, no, this will be the lightning round. Uh, if there were like uh, confetti guns, they'd be going off right now. Air horns. Boo, 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 boo. Wow. So I'm just going to quickly, I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you just answer a quick right off the top of your head. Don't even think about okay. it. Okay, lightning round begin. What's the last book you read? Stay True by Hua Su. Oh, cool. I love that book. That's a really great book. Guys, you want a Pulitzer Prize? Yes, it's amazing. Is it for that book, though, or is it for something else? I think it was for that book, wasn't it? Wow. Watch, I'm wrong. No, but it's yeah, an amazing I didn't know. book. Yeah, I know he won a Pulitzer Prize, and I didn't, I didn't know if it was for the book or not. Maybe it wasn't for the book then. I'm, I'm double. But it's an I amazing sure. book. He, he writes for other things. Yeah, so. he's a journalist. Yeah, but that's an amazing book. Lost to Stay True. Um, it's a memoir. Okay, next question. What's the last movie or show that you watched? Succession. Oh, oh my God. Does that count? <laughs> yes, that absolutely counts. Okay, very good. I have thoughts, but we can talk about this later. What's I have last... thoughts too. <laughs> What's the last band or musician you listened to? Band or musician I listened to? Uh, the last one. Very long. Oh, like just not just on like like Spotify or something? Yes, that you just listened to before like you hopped on to talk to us. Or... Catherine Wheel. Oh, okay. Nice. You know what Perfect. that is? Yes. <laughs> I'm really? not culturally I'm not culturally illiterate. <laughs> but they're not like that popular. I know, but I've heard of them. Like I don't, okay. I'm a librarian. We know things. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> okay. Phone that's call true. or text. Phone call or text. Text. Very good. And I think I know the answer to this question. Email Favorite? though is first. Email oh, before phone call or text. Send me an email. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay. Favorite neighborhood in LA? I think I know the answer. <laughs> yeah, I got to say Sawtell, Japantown. <laughs> Very good. And the last uh, question in the lightning round, what was your last Google search? Oh, what was it? Okay. Last Google search was Damon John's ripping off ribs company. What? <laughs> okay. I would want Damon to John, more. not John's. Damon John. He's from Shark Tank. Oh, right. That's Damon from Shark Tank, the one who's okay. maybe part of FUBU. And I guess he ripped, quote, ripped off a 
company that makes ribs from that he oh. invested in on Shark Tank, and they're now coming out in the news saying that uh, that they got ripped off by uh, Damon Back John. And I was just reading about it because I heard about it. So oh, that okay. was probably two hours ago. Okay. I'm gonna have to Google this because it sounds intriguing. So I'll be Googling that as well. Um, so yes, thank you for participating in the lightning round. Pachoo, pachoo. Oh, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Oh. <laughs> I wish I really had like lights or something Those are great. more dramatic. Oh, great, thanks. <laughs> I'm sure so that now, you can probably get like something you could push that would make the I background. Know. I don't I don't know. Something like a GIF or something. Anyway. Maybe you can't. I don't know. <laughs> it would just make this whole thing like it would just crash or something. You could get a sparkler. Oh, a way. I think it could be a fire hazard. So that would uh, true. Maybe straight. <laughs> in a library. Okay. <laughs> All those books you have in the background right there are going to be in danger. That would be terrible if like library set ablaze because of streamers set up by librarians. With um, sprinkler, so, yeah, ooh. because of lightning round. Yeah, no, we celebrating Asian American, <laughs> Hawaii, native. Hawaii Native Hawaiian first person month. <laughs> I don't want that on my uh, my conscience. <laughs> we will not do that. So moving on, we will go to. We have lots of questions from the audience. Let's go. Um, and I promised. I actually got an email ahead of time, um, from a fan, and if I could find it, did I lose it? Oh no. No, I had it. I'm so okay. sorry. His name is Jerry. <laughs> and he sent an email. Okay, I'll, I'll find it. But let's, because uh, he sent it ahead of time and he was so excited. Oh, here it is. Wow. Okay. Okay, Jerry, let's find it. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. <laughs> Gary, let's find Gary. it. Gary. Okay, here we are. Okay, he writes, Eric, been a GR fan for years and I really miss the magazine. Have you considered doing anything in print again? Perhaps an annual issue? Not sure of the economics involved, but it would be great. Best regards, Gary. Bad economics involved, but um, we are, okay, I can announce it here. We're going to make a giant robot book. Whoa! So the book is going to be um, kind of celebrating giant robot, the uh -huh. entirety of giant robot. Uh, it's uh -huh. supposed to come out next year in May. Uh huh. A this year from exciting. now. Exciting! This is exciting stuff. So we got an exclusive. <laughs> Ooh. And, and it, the, but it's, it's the library, uh, very be... apropos. So what's that? And that you're uh, sharing it with a library audience, very apropos. Yeah, <laughs> most important audience of all. So like literally, it's supposed to be like a 300 page kind of a book, wow. and probably hardcover and full size and uh -huh. all that stuff. And um, there's um, people working on it with me now. Oh, that's so exciting! Awesome, awesome. Okay, Betty and I'll asks. Have archive material and maybe some new material too oh exciting okay yeah there's a lot of people very excited in the um in the chat <laughs> okay so we have that'll be published and hopefully because it's going to be published by who, what i think is a really good publisher it'll probably uh -huh. get the word will probably get out i hope like it won't just be like something that's done indie and you'll never hear about it this mm. should get out i think oh nice okay i will be anxiously awaiting and technically <laughs> next year will be year 30 Oh, no way. Wow. Yes, because it started in uh, 1994, so it'll be year 30. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so Betty asks, I might have missed it. How was the name created or chosen? Ah, so basically, for, for people who are older, there was a show called Giant Robot. Uh, uh -huh. It was not called Giant Robot, sorry. It was, it, in Japan, it was called Giant Robo, right? So it's mm -hmm. just basically Giant Robot. But in America, it was called Voyage into Space. They were com they combined a whole season of a TV show in and made a movie, and that movie would show and the robot was named Giant Robot, mm -hmm. and it was controlled by a little kid with a watch and he would talk uh -huh. into the robot, and it was sort of like that Beastie Boys music video. Uh, uh, sabotage. No, no, no. There's one? one with a robot in it, and they're kind of like. Oh, I thought you were... It was like later, know. but it was sort of like that. And oh. um, just imagine that it was a, it was a live action thing, probably from the early seventies. Anyways, it comes from that. And that was on TV here in Los Angeles uh -huh. very often. Like if you're my age, you saw that because you had no choice. It was just uh -huh. on so often uh -huh. that you uh -huh. couldn't miss it. And it was called Voyage into Space. Ah, okay, there and you go. Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. That was the good. episodic version. Uh -huh. And then the movie version was called Voyage into Space. Someone, an anonymous attendee put like a summary of that movie and they didn't know the title, but I think they, yes, yes. Yeah, because they uh, combined so, all the episodes into one long, like uh -huh. an, into a movie, but there was, it was an episodic uh, show. 
And multiple people are clarifying the video was intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. Thank you. What? <laughs> Is, oh, is the I music correct? video. Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of copying the idea of that giant robot, uh -huh. Johnny Sacco and his flying robot show. They're trying to, yeah, it was kind of copying it. Very good. Okay. Let's Which is kind of cool, right? It was like a great concept. I think it goes over most people's heads unless you're of age. Otherwise, mm -hmm. other people have no idea where it comes from. Excellent. Okay, let's As see. we get older, references just get fuzzier and fuzzier on things, right? People are just like... <laughs> If you're younger, you're like, I have no idea, right? Because they, they've not seen any of this. But I will log in in the memory bank to watch these in the future. And we have we have tons of questions. I'm sorry, guys. I'm hoping we can get to all of them. Go for it. Um, let's see. Oh, well, there's lots of very nice comments. Um, Megan mentions that I was so glad to find Giant Robot after working in the JET program in Japan from 2001 to 2002, getting back to LA and having access to Japanese things here at home in California. So shout out to, to GR awesome. for that. What was, what was their name? Megan. Megan, Megan thank you, Megan. So I got into the JET it. program. Oh. I didn't go. Oh. <laughs> I decided to start my career, which became Giant Robot, instead uh -huh. of going to the JET program. Because I met so many people I knew that went to the JET program. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would come back looking for jobs. And it was mm -hmm. like, oh, you're just disappeared for a little while. They had a great time. but. Uh -huh. I decided, you know what, I'm not going to do that. And I'm just going to get life going, you know, and mm -hmm. I regret it a little bit, but I did get in and I just, I declined. And can you tell the audience if they're not familiar with the JET program is? Oh, I don't know what it stands for, but basically it's you're teaching English in Japan. Uh -huh. Most of the time you don't get to pick where you are at. So you may get put into a remote location in Japan. Like you might end up mm -hmm. on an island with like 10 kids or something literally oh, wow. like, I know people that did that and uh -huh. you teach you teach English there mm -hmm. a lot of people I know who took who went on the jet program came back speaking not one word of Japanese like they oh, wow. actually got worse oh, at Japanese no. <laughs> and they came back only speaking English because uh -huh. they met other Americans and only mm -hmm. spoke English the whole time so they actually that didn't help them at all mm -hmm. but everybody I know who went on the jet program loved it so I missed out and Catherine, uh, she she knows what it stands for. Japanese oh, Japan exchange, exchange, and exchange and teaching. Is that what it is? Thank you, Catherine. It's a okay, program, and Megan, and Megan also wanted to share the same Megan um, from the Jet program. She so much of her art in her house is from uh, Giant Robot. Thank yeah. you, Megan. Megan Megan's a, a, a supporter. Okay, Betty asks, do you have a favorite publishing year or one that is more memorable than others? publishing year so there's 16 years of publishing giant robot mm -hmm. i think when it comes down to it it's always those first early ones that you remember the most because they were so odd mm -hmm. right because there was no rhyme or reason there was no groove it was completely uh you know just just doing what we do and figuring it out as you go along but once we get to the point where we kind of knew, knew what we were doing it gets a little more blurry because I'm kind of like, okay, the year 13 and 14 are almost like they all blur into one. But mm -hmm. I remember those first years, they're a little wild. <laughs> the wily. <laughs> because uh, there was a point where it's like, it gets, it gets, it, it starts off very culty and, and tiny. Mm -hmm. And then it gets a little bit popular. And then it gets culty and popular. This is before mm -hmm. it gets glossy. And at that time, I would say, our own cults of personality, like our own personalities of it, it, it becomes like we get more popular, like Giant Robot was popular, but like I was popular too. And over time, I get less popular and the magazine becomes more popular, right? The title Giant Robot becomes popular yeah. and I become just an editor or publisher and editor. It's not me. It becomes this thing, you know, this overall thing that's bigger. But I think in the beginning, it was more like I was popular, you know, and you know what I mean? It was more like that. So it's kind of more weirder. Like I would get recognized more then than I would now. Like, you know, at the time I would go to walk down, walking down the street, you'd be like, people would be like, oh my God, it's everybody. You know, they get all excited because it was, um, I guess it just felt like more approachable because it was kind of small, but very culty and popular. Does that make any sense? So yes. that time it was kind of fun because it was weird. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh -huh. But then eventually it becomes like, okay, you're, you know, we're just, just working. You know, right. you can right. work in people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And again, we have so many questions. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm going to okay. try no, to I'm many, not in a rush unless you are. Possible. Libraries. Oh, well, you are. The library is closing in like 15 minutes. 
<laughs> oh, okay. We'll make so, it. So we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, okay. Holly asks, are there any current creations that slash creators that remind Eric of giant robot now? No, no. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, no. Kathy asks, at what point did the designs change from pace to computer, if ever? Oh, it did. Uh, I'm going to guess somewhere in the later 90s. Okay. Yeah, the later 90s, because we use Quark Express, uh, mm -hmm. then eventually it becomes InDesign. But um, learning how to use computers, basically Apple, Macs, I guess. It doesn't have to be Apple or Mac, but I mean, it's mm -hmm. what we used. And I learned it all. Like, I had to learn it all. So, yeah, basically in the late 90s, it all becomes computerized. Great. Okay. And Brad asks, why aren't there any frames on the art for your art shows? Frames? Oh, sometimes. Oh, that's funny. So a lot of art shows, well, right now the print show, there's no frames, right? So, uh -huh. but most of the art shows, if it's a solo show, there's usually framed. It's all framed. But and that's have... sort of like the indie vibe. It's like, if the artist can't afford frames, uh -huh. then fine, no frames. You can't afford it. I'm not going to force an artist to like break the bank to show off. You know, mm -hmm. if, if the art stands without a frame, fine with me. It's okay. I don't want to make people spend if they can't afford it. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. that's hurtful. That's more of the democratic spirits of uh, the art at Giant Robot, I think. It's, so. that's, I guess that's the indie spirit too, right? Yeah. It's doing what we can with whatever you got. And we have multiple folks from all over the country. I saw Hawaii, Philly, and Minneapolis. Thank you. So, thank hi. You. Hi, guys. <laughs> OK, let's see. Um, oh, Holly shares, not to be blasphemous in chat, but as a collage lover, I would go wild with a copy of Giant Robot. Oh, no. Don't we do that, Holly. Copies. <laughs> you could just tear them up. You know what? I forgot. I want to get you copies of Giant Robot for the LA County Library. We don't have any, right? I would love that, too. I OK. I. I I have I have my own personal <laughs> I have my own personal stash, but and I'm disappearing. I'm sorry. You can't. Oh, it's okay. Of magazine. I I, but, I mean um, I have copies I can give you. I just forgot. No, it's like I want I want to share this with people, but at the same time, it's okay. like I don't want anyone to get their grubby hands. Oh, I've, I've, I can make you some. I can get you a bunch. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you, Eric. We'd love that. Happy to have want, it. We want people to to um to read the issues and that's, explore giant robots. Me too. So yay! Okay, excellent. Okay. Uh, oh, lots of nice comments. Uh, Brad also says, it's so great to see that GR stores are busier than ever after COVID. It's true, I think. I mean, yeah, sure. Yes. <laughs> Keep supporting Giant Robot is what it is. <laughs> hope it, yeah, I hope it stays that way. But yeah, <laughs> it's different. You know what I mean? Like post-COVID time or end of COVID, I guess you would say, or however you want to look at that. Um, definitely different. You know, it's not the same like how we run everything. It's it's all like very different than it was in 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of change though, I think is doable because it's kind of like got this indie thing going on. Like I'm mm -hmm. willing to change it all if I have to mm -hmm. and uh, easily do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Caroline asks, is there an Asian American artist you think more people should know about? Wow, there's a lot, uh, tons. Uh, Rain Sito. That's a Rain good one. Uh -huh. S-V-E-T-O, Rain. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Uh, there's can a whole bunch. Can you describe their art? Rain's art. She makes really small art. Her, the biggest art piece is like this big and it's just mm -hmm. filled with really amazing detail, but has like a very kind of a, a feeling of that no, I kind of aspire to, I guess. It's just mm. like <laughs> the stores kind of like she does a lot of interiors and they're super hectic looking. Mm -hmm. They feel very Asian or Asian American, but kind of got that Asian pack rat vibe going on. Uh -huh. You know, like grandma's house kind of a vibe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It depends on your grandma, but you know, <laughs> grandma's house, a little bit pack ratty, Asian American, uh -huh. Asian grandma. And uh, I don't know, there's something warm and loving about that. So oh, that sounds wonderful. I'm very, I, I really like their art her. or her art in it, but usually it's small, but just packed uh -huh. with detail. And can you say her name again? The artist's name? Rain Sito. Rain Sito. Very good. Okay. I mean, and that's just one artist. There's so many, but so many. she came to uh -huh. mind. Okay. And Deborah asks, are you bringing back the post-it note art series? The post-it notes. Yeah. That, uh, we've done it the last, we did it, we did it in December, every December. So We've been doing it in a different form, but yeah, post-it notes came back, small post-it notes came back in, it was in December, and we'll do it again. Great, okay. 
And someone wants to shout out the La Crescenta branch. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> La Crescenta, that's uh, north east? Very, very far from where we are. <laughs> you know? It's okay. People got to live, you know, people live yeah. where they live. And uh, the fact that there's a library, LA County Library there uh -huh. is cool. Yeah, we're everywhere, guys. <laughs> if you're not familiar no, with the, the map is crazy. Yeah, I mean, you should. We're, it's we everywhere have... but where I live. It's like. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Okay, I guess that I was about to say we there has to be a branch near you. There's a lot of like LA City libraries, but the yeah. county libraries, one in Marina del Rey, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where that. Oh, well, there's one. Culver City's close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since look, LAPL, we always get mixed up with LAPL, but they're more the city proper. They service the city proper, and we're you know around the county. <laughs> uh, and we have an anonymous question. Props to Eric. I rep I respect your hustle. How did you outlast Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash that was also in West LA from 2004 to 2007? You know, the weirdest thing is I never went there. Where uh -huh. was it? <laughs> I mean, you were talking about like a comic book store uh -huh. that's like a Kevin Smith run probably or right. owned, I'm guessing. And um, uh -huh. I never, I don't even know where that was. I thought it was I in heard... Hollywood, but I can't. It, the person said Westwood and I always heard about it, but I never went. <laughs> I never went either. And where in Westwood was it? I probably would love it today. You know what I think what happened was too, was that, I mean, in 2004 to 2007, how are comics doing? Like, how were they doing? Were they doing well? Or was that like a low period, three movies that kind of escalated all those comics that, you know, just brought it straight back up? I don't know. I have a feeling, was that a lull, like a bad time to do it? Uh -huh. Like if you did it today, it'd probably rock. It'd be like uh -huh. amazing, right? Uh -huh. Comic books are awesome. And Brad uh, asks, how are the Linda Lindas connected with Giant Robot? Oh, it's very people walk in thinking that they're my kids, but they're not. <laughs> uh, Martin, the, the co-editor of Giant Robot, uh, it's uh, one. his daughter is one of the Linda Lindas. Yeah. And uh, watch... his sister is... Uh, his sister is a mother of two Linda Lindas. Oh, okay. So there's three Linda Lindas kind of associated uh -huh. closely with Giant Robot, but you know they're they're not they're not my offspring. <laughs> and oh, if but, you watch... but but Wendy is the mother, right? Wendy and yes. Martin got married, uh -huh. so the designers uh -huh. and the, the, they're the parents of uh, of, of, one, of one Linda. One, Linda. <laughs> one, yes, if you watch the documentary, uh, uh, their daughter makes a uh, cameo. Yeah. <laughs> So please watch the documentary. It's yeah. amazing. And you learn so much about Giant Robot. Um, but yes, I want to thank you so much for your time, Eric. It's, it's <laughs> you stayed uh, so long. <laughs> thank you for- Well, wait a second here. Your library is, you've got, aren't you open 10 more minutes? Yes, but we have to do our closing procedures. <laughs> What's that? Just lock the door? No, <laughs> and have like a, what is it? Night of the museum situation? Do, do you have to kick people stayed? out? Are there people in there now? Like do you have to kick out? Yeah, well, people love the library. Some stay until literally like the last wow. minute. Yeah, and gotcha. we, we love it. Utilize our resources. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I use it. You know what? Actually, I do audio. I use audio books sometimes from the library, oh, nice. uh -huh. which is really I, nice because so many books, the audio component is actually mm -hmm. really not so good. Uh -huh. yes, so I get to I know which ones are good because if uh -huh. the author's reading it, usually it's uh -huh. good. But then if it's sometimes they get like a, a stranger reading it and it makes yeah, yeah. no sense, like the voice uh -huh. doesn't fit the right. tone of the book. Yeah. And I always, for the longest time, I was like, why can't I get into audiobooks? And it's like, I listen to podcasts, you know, what is, this is the same thing. And it really depends so much on the reader. Like, honestly. It's, That's why like yeah. Stay True with Wasu, he reads it. So uh -huh. you kind of get an understanding of his passion that's in the story. Right. And maybe something like if you're reading, um, what was her name? Michelle Zwerner. Is that right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Playing an H card. She's Mark, reading yeah. that. So you could hear her. You, right. you really get it. You feel like you're in there. So in that yeah. way, those make sense. But then there's some other ones where I'm like, this voice is not appropriate. <laughs> it's not the right voice. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much, Eric. Uh, again, this was wonderful. Um, and for anyone um, that was asking in the chat, this is going to be recorded. So we're going to edit it and um, put captions, screen caps for people, uh, subtitles, what am I saying? And it should post to the um, LA County YouTube page. But if you registered, I will also send you the link via email as soon as that goes up. So thank you again to Eric. This was wonderful. This was so much fun um, talking with you. And thank you so much for our wonderful audience. You were great. Um, and yes, happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Uh, visit the giant robot stores, 
uh, visit the website, giant robot website. Kasha, if you could put that in the chat. And yeah, thank you everyone. This was so great. Um, have a good evening and take care. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Thanks, good night, everybody. everyone. Thanks everybody everywhere. <laughs>